Hey there, golfers. I'm Drew Mahold of Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell. He's a master club fitter here at Second Swing Minnetonka. Thomas, how are you doing today? I'm really excited. I just got the chance to open up some brand new tailor-made product that just arrived today, and we get to test it. Yeah, we got tailor-made Sim. I got the Sim here. You got the Sim Max. Uh, we're going to have Thomas hit a bunch of tee shots for us. We're going to compare the Sim, the Sim Max, and the Sim Max D all to the M family, so the M5, M6, uh, and the M6 D type. So uh, we're going to see the differences there. So Thomas, I know when you went down to TaylorMade, we got kind of an introduction to the SIM family, and then you've been fitting customers into the M family all 2019. You know, SIM stands for shape and motion. So really, I think what we'll notice is you can kind of see the shape here, that inertia generator in the back. That's the thing I'm most curious about with this test. Yeah, I'm expecting to possibly see a little bit more club speed. And I think TaylorMade's claiming that on the downswing, this inertia generator is designed to help generate a little bit more speed to get a little bit more potential club head speed and a little more distance um, and see if I can maybe consistently hit it over 300 yards here. Well, and we're going to make the, make sure that this test is you know as unbiased as possible as we usually do. So um, how are we going to make sure we do that? I know we're going to use the same shaft and make sure everything is in standard settings, I believe. Yeah, so for all six club heads that we hit, um, they're all going to be 9 degrees aloft. They're all going to be in the standard setting. So M5, we've got it kind of right there. Mm -hmm. um, got, here's the sim with the sim weight right in the middle. Right in the middle. Uh, all the others are going to be obviously in their standard setting. There's no adjustability on other models. We're going to have them all on the standard setting, 9 degree loft. So this is the tailor-made tip. And we're going to test with the Diamana 60X limited shaft. It's one of the new offerings from uh, tailor-made with the sim line. It's very similar to the golf shaft that I'm currently playing. The reason why I didn't use my shaft is because no, it, we do have the all fit system, but I wanted to make sure I use it so I could use this tailor made tip here. To Absolutely. Go. So everything is going to be uh, performing, you know, really as it should, right? That's what we're going to see here. So, Thomas, you ready to hit a bunch of tee shots? Let's get after it. <laughs> all right, Thomas, we'll start with the M5, okay. and then we'll kind of just, you know, go back and forth to M Family Sim. So we'll start with the M5, and then we'll kind of get more forgiving and more draw bias as we go. Sounds good. All right, Thomas, a little baby fade work in there with any initial impressions so far? Felt pretty solid to face. Those are actually five pretty good swings in a row. Yeah. Very consistent bull flight. Every single one has had that, like you said, that little kind of baby fade um, with a little bit less loft, nine degrees. The fact that it's not draw bias is always a little harder for me to kind of turn over mm -hmm. as there's less loft on the golf club. Um, so interesting the fact that it was pretty straight overall or just a little bit right of center. Yeah. Absolutely. But, and yeah. then as we move over here into the sim, I know one of the big things that people have noted about SIM is that they've taken away some adjustability with you know, their standard SIM. There's just the one weight that goes from heel to toe versus in the M5, you had the option to go front to back as well. So, yeah. uh, but obviously for this test, we're doing everything in neutral uh, as possible here. So uh, why don't we go to the SIM now? Sounds good. All right, All right, Thomas, five with the sim. What did you think first in terms of look and feel and you know the appearance? This sim driver is the best looking driver that TaylorMade has kind of ever created. That's this kind of like grayish, grayish white mixture mm -hmm. on the top here with the black, the gray, the white, the blue, essentially on this pattern. I think it just looks really, really appealing to kind of look down. I commend TaylorMade on the, on the looks on the club. I like that the sim driver looks maybe a little bit more compact. So mm -hmm. looking down at it, it appeals toward a kind of a player's kind of type of driver. Um, the one thing I did notice is I picked up a little bit of club speed with this yep. one here too. Yeah. I'm um, looking at the numbers quickly here. We got them collapsed and I mean, that was, you know, I mean, this is five swings with each, so it's yep. not a huge sample size, but just in those five swings, you gained what a mile and a half or more of club speed there. Yeah. 
So, and that's what, I mean, that's what TaylorMade's preaching with the, the sin, the shape in motion, you know, that inertia generator in the back kind of asymmetrically built in there to match the, the path of a swing. So, I mean, obviously we got more clubs to test, but so far it's proving to be true. Be interesting to see as we continue on, see what actually happens with my club speed as we do test the sim drivers versus the M5 and M6 models to mm -hmm. kind of see what happens there. I did warm up here for 30 minutes before we started hitting shots because I want to make sure I was completely warm to make yeah. sure that first drive that I hit is what I'm kind of max out too. So yeah. really interesting. I picked up a little bit of speed, picked up ball speed along with it. The smash factor was identical 1.50. Can't complain with that at all. Mm -hmm. um, we noticed that the ball did spin and launch a little bit higher with the sim, but you'll notice that carry distance that I really picked up yeah. with, with the sim. If you go over too, here to so. carry distance, you're going to notice you had pretty consistent carry distance there yeah. with the sim, uh, which was, that's, I mean, you like to note that as well, especially in wet conditions, that can be a big deal uh, if you're carrying it that much farther on, on average. So. Yeah. yeah, there was a couple of shots when I hit with the M5 that were just kind of low, very low spinning, kind of dived yeah. out of the sky. You can see those two a little bit shorter mm -hmm. there. So a little more consistent on carry distance, which is very, very important. So absolutely good numbers with this club. Yeah, let's uh, now we'll transition to the M6. Okay. All right, Thomas, TaylorMade M6. Now you'll notice that, you know, a little bit on the sole, if you look at it, there's a, a, a little bit of that inertia generator shape to it uh, that it looks like TaylorMade kind of, you know, tested out that idea a little bit with M6 yep. and the M6 D type. And they've really kind of expanded that with the sim. Yeah, it's not as pronounced in the M6, right. but obviously in the sim, it's a lot more pronounced and yep. easy to kind of see there. So. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Thomas, five with the M6. Um, what'd you think? I mean, you got, the numbers were pretty solid, right? You were getting the, the carry distance kind of similar to the sim. Any other f takeaways from the fitting perspective? Yeah, so um, what I noticed was when I, there's a couple of shots I feel like it didn't quite hit perfect, but they still stayed in the air pretty well and actually mm -hmm. kind of did the same thing every single time. So forgiveness with the M6, yeah, pretty, pretty solid right there. So That's the calling card too, that the M6. Calling card, so. Yeah, yeah. so I feel like there's a couple of swings. Noticed, uh, if you scroll to the left, I'm curious to see what the club speed was at. Yeah, so 110.7, one, 110.9 one with the M6 and M5. Uh, and then the sim was 112.3. So I did pick up a little bit more almost about a mile and a half more club mm -hmm. speed with the sim drivers. So that's probably partly to do with the inertia generator that the new sim drivers have. Yeah. I know they claim that it is to help maybe pick up a little bit more speed on mm -hmm. the downswing. Um, so picked up more club speed, more potential distance. Right. Uh, what we noticed with the M6 and sim was my carry distance was almost the exact same. Right. And then the M5 was just flying a little lower not quite carrying as far. If it was firm, yeah. it would have rolled out, but if it was wet out, mm -hmm. it right. might not have gone quite as far. So. Exactly, yeah. So. And these are, you know, and right around, you know, I know you like to be just a little, maybe over 100 feet or so in the air, uh, but you got that out of the M6 and with the sim as well. So pretty good numbers right there. I mean, and you got a pretty consistent kind of little fade working you know, so far. And yep. I mean, that's, you know, that's very playable for sure, especially if you're hitting it 300 and 11 yards or whatever your numbers are looking like here. Yeah, I would definitely take that in a heartbeat. I could yeah. play that little bit of a fade with it with the driver, not a problem. So. Yeah. Yep. All right, well now we'll transition to the Sim Max. Now, in terms of the appearance, are you noticing, you know, anything in terms of the shape maybe of the M6 versus the Sim Max, or is that still pretty similar? Honestly, it looks pretty similar to the M6 looking down. Obviously the coloring is a little different. Okay. Uh, I'm, I feel like it does look a little larger than what the actual sim kind of looks sure. like. Sure, which is um, what it should look like, right? I mean, this, like it's the standard sim should be more compact, whereas the sim max should kind of give that more uh, modern, forgiving type of high MOI head look. Yeah, I feel like with the sim max, I feel like there's just a little bit more kind of movement with the club back this direction mm -hmm. as opposed to with the, the sim, it was maybe a little yeah. more compact up a little more forward as right. well. Right. I think what TaylorMade's going for with their new shaping is kind of more towards the sole with that 
you know, the inertia generator we've talked so much yep. about, whereas it's not going to be noticed so much from the address standpoint. Okay. Yep. And that's the other thing too that I'm looking at as well with the inertia generator is at setup, I can't see it at right. setup too. If I twist the head around that way, obviously you can see this at the yeah. bottom there. But when you line up to the club, I can't see it at all, which is obviously important because we don't want to really see anything yeah. else when you're looking down at the club head sure. address. Because it, it is a little bit different when you look at it, but again, yep. at address, you're not seeing anything, you're just seeing a clean club head. Yep, just seeing the club head from the top. All right, Thomas, M, well, the Sim Max uh, driver here, and you actually got one to draw for you, and you kind of seemed like it avoided that right side a little bit more than the others have. Yeah, that's exactly right. If you look at the screen right here, you'll notice the furthest one that I hit right, right here, was this one. That was the Sim Max. Look at the other two, two or three clubs that I've hit right here, mm -hmm. um, there a couple to the right. When I was hitting the M5, they were a little bit straighter there as well. It didn't quite go as far right as the other couple of clubs sure. that were hitting there. So it's obviously noticeable, a little bit more forgiving, uh, maybe a little more higher MOI. Mm -hmm. The one thing I found really interesting was the actual spin rate on this club though. Yeah. Um, it could be a little bit to do with hit location. I may be hitting it kind of a little bit higher on the, on the face in, in general, but the spin rate on this was very, very good. I would, ex I would have expected the Sim Max to actually have spun a little bit more than right. the Sim model there, but yeah, you Notice. got you know less than two thousand on average RPM with the Sim Max, and you know twenty four hundred with the Sim. So, I mean that's a little bit backwards of what we would think. But yep. um, in terms, I mean you did have you know you had a few. That last one was really good. You're hitting it you know one hundred twenty feet in the air. You got two thousand well two thousand forty eight yep. RPM, which is pretty much ideal. So that last one you hit was really good. And in terms of total distance, the Sim Max is actually on average you know, three yards farther than the rest of them. So yeah. pretty spin good performance is, there. Spin is king, essentially, yeah. when it comes to it. And because this, you know, the reason why the Sim Max wasn't spinning as much is because it wasn't traveling as far to the right. Any time the ball mm -hmm. kind of curves left to right, it's going to spin more. Sure. And then I had that one in there that I actually drew with this one here yeah. to kind of offset the data a little bit. That's why the spin rate was just Got a little it. bit, showing a little bit lower on this one. But I'd say in general, you may typically see this one spin just a little bit more than the actual Sim sure. driver for the most part if every shot was going to fly on the same flight and the same height. Yeah. And then we have to also comment again on the club speed. A uh, little bit higher than the M6. So, uh, you know, that, that inertia generator, that shape, you know, it's again, that's not like a major difference. Yeah. It's not huge, but it is increasing club speed, it seems to be. That's kind of the hypothesis going in, and it seems to be proving true at least a little bit. Well, any time I can get three quarters of a mile or a mile and a mile more faster with my, my club speed, yeah. it's more potential distance for sure. Obviously, I've still got to hit it right here. Yeah. Um, but it's showing that this inertia generator is doing its job. Mm -hmm. Generate, I think, what is the Sim Max and the Sim 9, those were what, 111.6 one, one mm. and 112.3. The M6 and M5 were high 110s. So yeah, so it was a little bit, little bit more club mm -hmm. speed with this, with this particular model. All right, well now we'll get into the draw bias clubs here, M6 D type and okay. the uh, Sim Max as well, and Sim Max D. All right, you got the M6 D type. Now, when you look at that compared to the last few, do you notice like the weight, uh, you know, distribution a little bit different with the draw bias? Not so much the weight, but when I set it down, for me, you know, it sets a little bit cl more close. Okay. So I, Yes, they do a great job of trying to hide it up, up at the top here, the way they kind of um, shape the club head a little bit. But yeah. if, I turn, if I put it down, for me, it looks like it is just a little more closed. Just setting it down, yeah, just, just kind of, down. it yeah. just feels like yeah. it's closed. Okay, so. interesting. Well, clearly, that was the kind of leftmost uh, dispersion up there. So the draw bias is, is working for you. Um, 
what did you notice in anything in particular in comparison to you know the Sim Max or the M, the standard M6 or any of the, really any other drivers that you've hit? At address, this the way the club sits. This gives me that little bit of added insurance that I'm able to get that club face to kind of release over just a yeah. little bit easier. I think I had, with the exception of the one to the right here, you know, four that were in this general area yep. right here had the one to the right. Everything else was more like four in this general area and one to the left. Right. So a little easier to turn over right to left for sure. Yep. You're definitely populating that left side a little bit more with the draw bias, which is what we should expect yep. from that. And, then, and a lot of that too is just simply that it helped you close the face. Like you said, at address it does... Uh, appear more closed for sure a little um, more closed at address yeah. now again club speed a little bit less than the sim driver so far interesting is exactly the same as the m6 yeah and, and one, then one you know, the, m, the m5 9. is also you know 110 110.7 so point seven. Yeah. so i mean it's very similar across the board there for the uh for the m family yep pretty good numbers i mean the fact that i was able to draw it a little bit you know the spin rate stayed down again a little bit there um, great carry, great total distance, pretty pretty solid across the board. Exactly 100 feet yeah. on average, it's not oh, bad. I like that, yeah. Pretty good, Yeah. pretty good so across the board there. Click to my face to path real quick. So we'll notice with this particular model, the M6 drawer, with that little negative number in front, it's just showing that club face actually was close to my path with this particular club. Okay. Every other one, if you scroll down, you'll notice was essentially one to two degrees over. Yeah. So they talk about making it a little bit easier to square that club face up. You know, D-type is a great option for players mm -hmm. that want to be able to draw that ball a little bit, or at least yeah. limit that shot to the right as much as they sure. can. Sure, yeah. absolutely. Well, now let's get to now the latest kind of draw bias version from TaylorMade, the Sim Max D. Again, I'm sure you kind of notice that closed face a little bit. Is it as drastic, I guess, as the M6 D-type? don't notice it as much at address, actually. I know that it's the Sim Max D, so I know yeah. it should be the draw bias, yeah. but maybe the way that they have designed the top of it, that it just kind of hides that draw bias, closed club face just a little bit huh. there. But yeah, it looks pretty similar to the, to the uh, Sim Max, essentially. Um, Interesting. Because that was one thing right away when I asked you about the M60 type, was that you could tell right away, I boom, could, I closed. Could, I and, could definitely uh, tell you're not right noticing away. Noticing it. Yeah. All right, we got five more now with the Sim Max D or draw type. Yep. Um, what would you think? Obviously, we had kind of the one that went, you know, way out here to the left. But, um, I mean, what did you think in terms of, you know, how did it compare to the M6 D type? And also how did it compare to the rest of the sim drivers? For me, looking down at it, it doesn't look like it's as closed. Yeah. Um, I, know, I know it is because I know it is a sim max drawer. But looking down at it, it looks a little bit square. Now, whether TaylorMade has hidden that a little bit with the way they've designed the, designed the top of the crown, even though knowing that it's the draw type model. Um, that'll be interesting to kind of test and see, you know, how much more closed it is. But to me, it looks like it's just a little bit more like the Sim Max looking down at it. I know it's the Sim Max D. I looked yeah. at the bottom <laughs> a couple of times there. But for me, looking down at it, it's not closed. So I think Tammy has done a great job at hiding that, because I know a lot of golfers don't like to know that their club is right, a yeah. couple, couple of degrees clo more close than the others. Um, I still did draw it a little bit more, though. You'll notice you had that one to the left, um, and then there's those three that were pretty straight, yeah, um, and the one out to the right there a little bit. So pretty general trend compared to all, all the others. The dispersion looks a little bit larger because I had that one that's right, got right, way, yeah. way, way over there to the left there. You take that out, um, it does get quite a bit take smaller. Take that out, it is definitely a little bit smaller. Um, but yeah, so it's a little bit more draw bias. I had, you know, one, two, three, four in this, in this area, just like kind of the M6 D type, which had kind of four there. Mm -hmm. And then if you look, split that in half and then look to the right side, then you'll see <laughs> all the other models that were not the draw yeah. type models that were training towards the right side a little bit yeah so absolutely yeah. and you know again first of all i want to commend you for uh 
the smash factor numbers here, because if we go down, <laughs> you're going to have <laughs> one five uh, all across the board here. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty you cool. You don't see that very yeah. often. Uh, yeah. Just one five on every single tee shot. Um, <laughs> 112 club speed. Okay. So, so we're, again, we're, you know, what, another mile an hour or so? Yeah, mile it's one mile an hour faster again. So interesting. Yep. Um, then if we go towards our distance numbers, you know, I had a little bit lower spin, um, but, uh, you know, total distance, it's definitely up there. You just had a couple lower shots. Yeah. But, I mean, the numbers are, are pretty solid again, I would say. It was spinning less because I was hitting at one seventy-eight feet in the air, yeah, and then also a little bit more to the left as well. Yeah, once again, ball curves right, right to left, it's going to spin less. Yep, it curves left to Good right, point. it's going to spin more. So that's why um, that spin rate and that height was just a little bit lower with the Simex draw nine degrees. Um, it could probably use maybe a little bit more loft to get that ball up in the air mm -hmm. to stay with with this model and see what actually happens. See if we can get that carry distance and spit up sure. a little bit to maximize complete distance. Uh, yeah, so interesting. Well, let's, uh, I'll have you look at these numbers a little bit more in depth here and then kind of give your fitting perspective here for golfers that might be deciding which of these models to go with. Okay. So, Drew, we got the chance to, we well, hit five shots with each one. Let's take a look at the numbers and see if there's anything that stands out to us. Mm -hmm. um, and one big takeaway I'm going to probably keep on talking about is the club speed yeah. difference between the, right. the Sim and the M family. Uh, it was noticeable that it was yeah. maybe a mile to a mile and a half faster with mm -hmm. the sim. So the inertia generator doing doing its job really, really well. Um, so with the sim versus M5, you'll notice 112.3 versus 110.7. So a little bit more faster, a little bit more potential distance. Um, what's interesting is total distance was identical with the two of them, but if we switch this to carry yeah. distance now, you'll notice the carry distance with the sim was so much more consistent and further. So you'll notice how, you know, essentially from north to south, that yellow circle there is a lot tighter versus yep. with the M5 was just maybe a little bit more from a little longer. Yeah, so. for sure. Yeah, that was the one thing that I noticed right away is you had a couple of those. And that's the M5 was built kind of low spin, right? Especially, and that's even in the standard you know, settings with the loft and the weights yeah. and everything. It was still built to be a lower spinning than, you know, like your M6 in 2019. And so it's not like terribly surprising to see a little lower spin there. But um, with the sim, you know, your spin numbers were actually a little bit higher than maybe I would have anticipated. Um, but it turned out, I mean, the numbers are still great. You're carrying it, you know, 288. That's pretty solid there. So, yeah, um, and then as we, as you talked about the club speed um, increase as well, it just gives you more potential distance. So. Uh, in terms of that's and that's the big collie car for sim is just the more club speed is going to give you more potential distance So that's what that shape is supposed to provide. Yep more potential distance as long as you're hitting it in the middle of the face You're right. gonna probably hit the ball a little bit further. We'll notice my smash factor as you mentioned <laughs> was pretty consistent every single time 1.50 um, So anytime you have more club speed and your smash factor is the same you're gonna get more ball speed Right so more ball speed is gonna equal more distance in the long run both were launching 12 degrees. The only difference obviously was the sim was just spinning a little bit more and a little more consistently. Um, with the M5, I just clicked on these cu a couple and noticed that one was 1280, 1400, 1745. So yep. the spin rate was a little bit lower, obviously with the outliers with, uh, yeah. with the M5 there yeah. too. So mm -hmm. interesting there. So carry distance for the win for sure with the sim driver, yep. absolutely. Um, if we need to carry that bunker, we're carrying about 288. We can take that bunker out of play that's 275, 280 out there and hope for the best. Oh, and yeah. Hopefully I can carry <laughs> that bunker or cut some dog legs. Right. So yeah. I like that. That's actually probably one of the highest carry distance I think I've actually seen in, in kind of testing here too, so which is kind of yeah. interesting. So really good numbers there. Once again, we're looking at that the Sim Max and the M6. Those The Sim Max essentially is kind of replacing the M6. Yeah. Touched on club speed. You know, notice I got about half a mile an hour faster with the Sim Max versus the M6. Mm -hmm. um, ball speed was a little bit higher too. Smash factor exactly the same. Um, what we will notice is, you know, one thing I do like with the M6 was the consistency. So this purple circle was very, very consistent with regards mm -hmm. to the kind of the carry distance uh, and total distance as well. But you will notice, if you look at the numbers, the Sim Max was going a little bit further, so 314 yards. 
which is pretty solid. The M6 was just slightly carrying just a little bit further because I was actually, you know, spinning a little bit, a little bit more right. with the M6 versus the Sim Max. Yep. I would have expected the Sim Max to maybe spin a little bit more. Um, could be related to hit location a little bit. Yeah. And also the fact I had this one kind of way, way over here on the left that's going to probably be that low spinning club in time the ball draws, yeah. essentially. I would think based on, like, if hypothetically we took out that left one or if we, you know, I think the performance overall is pretty similar because uh, you got those yep. four, you know, kind of bunched right together with the M6 ones. Yep. So... Uh, I think, you know, and they're supposed to kind of accomplish that same thing, right? Both heads are kind of built for that high MOI design for giving performance to help the ball launch into the air. It doesn't have that, you know, a draw or a fade bias necessarily. It's just kind of to provide the forgiveness. There's a lot of weight to the perimeter of the club head. So um, in terms of the performance, I think really they're pretty similar if you look at this and you say that left one, you take that out maybe and you're going to have nine shots right there very in you know within about what 15 foot circle were, it seems like it's pretty they close. were very very close yeah. so obviously you got one two three those those blue circles that were further than all the m6 ones there yeah, too so that's you obviously true. had a couple you know more outliers there didn't have any outliers with the m6 so i commend the taylor m6 on consistency and dispersion absolutely uh but you notice the sim actually yeah. went just a little bit further which so. we can also maybe attribute to the little bit of uh, added club speed. Yeah, a little more added club speed. It's going to go a little further. It can go further off line yeah, too. That's true. Yeah. Okay, so the two drawer versions. Um, we notice one mile an hour faster club speed with the Sim versus the M6. So a little bit more club speed can lead to a little bit more potential yeah. distance. Uh, what's interesting was how much further I could actually get those balls to go a little bit further to the left. Yeah. When we had those other drivers up there, you would notice they were over here to the right side. Yeah. So I had four with the M6 draw that were essentially in the ideal spot, yeah. and you know four with the um, mat with the sim draw that were kind of in the same area. Yeah. And one that drew a little bit more there too. So they were generally more in the middle of the fairway or just yeah. slightly towards the left. Yeah, the average location of where the, the draw bias drivers were ending up versus the other ones, I think is significant. I mean, it's, it's gotta be t perhaps 15, 20 yards more left uh, than the Sim Max, the Sim M6, M5, which is pretty significant because, I mean, that's what those drivers are for. They're for yeah. those golfers that struggle with the, the slice or the block miss. And if you can fix it by that many yards, just by getting a draw biased head, that's obviously a big win and could be the difference from hitting tee shot out of bounds to, you know, having a look at the green or in a hazard to in the fairway. Like there's, it's a big yeah. difference. We well, gotta keep in mind, generally I'd say about 80% of golfers usually fade the ball versus draw the ball. Yeah. So that's why we typically have that draw bias club head right. out there as, as an option to help those players to get that club face to release over a little bit mm -hmm. easier. Um, speaking of releasing over a little bit easier, I want to look at this clip face to path number. Notice with the both of them, my face to path number was negative 0.4 and negative 0.4. So both of them, I was able to get that face angle closed and actually get that face to path a little bit closed to allow that ball to go right to left. Right, see that's, you get that right to left yeah, ball flight, which also has, I would say, it, you know, it's taken some spin off too. So some of these, the draw, uh, the spin numbers of the draw uh, club heads, if I remember correctly, were a little bit lower, and obviously that would be a contributing factor. It was just that you're not, you don't have that left to right, which increases spin. You got yep. right to left uh, movement on the ball overall. Correct. They both were gone same distance, three thirteen yards. Um, only the obviously difference was the sim max draw with you know, a couple that were flying a little bit lower. Um, the spin rate was lower, the carry distance is going to be lower when it doesn't go quite, mm -hmm. carry quite as far. Those were kind of a couple of, of miss hits I would consider that would go sure. a little bit lower. I usually hit it about 100 feet in the air with, for the most part with, with my driver. If we take a look at all the sim models here, the one thing that obviously stands out to me is every single shot, even with the M5 and M6, that I shot that I hit today went over 300 yards. I don't know if I've done a test <laughs> where I've, true. every single shot has gone over 300 yards. So that's, you know, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with that. The fact that I'm getting a little bit more club speed out of the new sim models is going to help more potential distance. Um, and also the ball speed was in the high 160s 
Normally, I'm kind of like a 110, 164, 165 kind yeah. of Generally, guy. that your club speed, I've, if I've, you know, from watching you hit drivers a bunch here as we do these videos, has been about 110 is kind of where you're at. If you really get after it, maybe a little more than that. Yep. Um, and then that ball speed, does, like you said, hovers 164, 165, somewhere in there. These are higher numbers than I'm used to seeing. They are. And that, I mean, we've talked about the shape over and over, but clearly there's something that's working because you've added both club speed, ball speed, and distance, both carry and total, I would say, based on the tests that we've conducted here with the Sim and M family. Yeah, uh, I just wanted to touch really briefly on the kind of dispersion. So with the tailor-made Sim, so that's kind of your more, more kind of possibly like better player, guy that has a lot of a little more speed. Mm -hmm. We'll notice how you have that trend of a little bit further to the right-hand side yeah. of the fairway. So Sim, out of the three models, is maybe tendency to be a little bit more, you know, fade bias mm -hmm. or slightly more open face than the, than the other two. Um, obviously that can be adjusted. Yeah. Like, you know, you've got that sliding weight, you've got the hosel setting that you can put upright to make that ball curve a little more right mm -hmm. to left. Um, if we look here, Sim Max. Sim Max was essentially kind of more in the middle. So we had four that were you know, just kind of right of center here, one kind of to the left. So that's more kind of towards that straighter, just straight, club. Mm -hmm. Far straight club. I was really impressed with how far right. I hit that particular club. And then you've got the draw version. Draw version I was able to essentially get that ball to kind of shape a little more right to left yeah. as well. So Yeah. So really yep. I mean each club is kind of doing what it's supposed to do, you know? I yep. mean you got and like we said with this the standard sim driver, you do have that adjustable weight in the back that can uh, give you a little bit of a fade bias if you need it or a little bit more of a draw bias if you need it and you'll prefer that um, compact head, don't want to necessarily go to the bigger head of the draw bias, um, or the, I guess the Sim Max D, then you can get that out of your tailor-made Sim and just move that sliding weight on the sole down to the heel side and you'll get that draw bias. Yeah, this is all really, really great stuff. Um, tailor-made Sim's going to be really, really great in 2020. Absolutely. Yeah. Thomas, thanks for hitting a bunch of tee shots for us. Um, we got a lot of great data, and I think the big win here is the club speed that TaylorMade Sim provides. So for golfers out there watching this, obviously TaylorMade Sim family is a terrific option. Uh, they gain the, clubs, the club speed, uh, and for you, gain some distance. So uh, if you're interested in TaylorMade Sim family, you'd stop in the Second Swing store or visit our website at secondswing.com to get your driver and uh, start hitting it both longer and straighter. Thanks again for watching, and uh, if you're interested in more content, please subscribe to our channel. We'll have a lot more tests for you in the future.